Our next speaker is Dr. Giancarlo Lucchetti. We have to use our hands to speak in Italian, Lucchetti. Dr. Lucchetti is a general practitioner, a fellowship trained geriatrician, and a PhD student from Federal University of Sao Paulo. Currently, he coordinates the research department of Sao Paulo Medical Spiritus Association in the hospital João Evangelista. He is the author of several articles regarding spirituality and health in journals such as Journal of Rehabilitation Medicine, Medical Education, Family Medicine, Circulation, Substance Use and Misuse, and Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Please, let's all welcome Dr. Gian Carlo Lucchieri on the stage. Well, I must admit that my surname is not very easy to pronounce, so I thank you. Um, today, I have a, a very tough task because the, the speakers, my previous speakers, were just amazing. In fact, this lecture was prepared a few months ago. And today, after these presentations, I really don't know what to say. But I will try, so I will go on here. My name is Giancarlo Lucchetti, so that's my surname. And today I'm going to talk about the complementary spiritist therapy, the systematic review of scientific evidence. Uh, today I'm going to... Let just me try. Okay. So... The authors of this article, this article was uh, recently published in the year of 2011 uh, in the Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine. We were very happy with the, this publication because it's one of the major journals regarding complementary and alternative field. So uh, after the acceptance, we were very, very happy with this paper. I must cite the authors, that's me, Giancarlo, Alessandra Lucchetti, Rodrigo Bassi, and Marlene Nobre. So, I will start with a brief introduction, just to situate the Spiritism context. Uh, Spiritism is the third largest religion in Brazil, with approximately 2.3 million followers. Its believers make up the most well-educated, there are estimates that 60% have at least 11 years of education, and its believers are among the wealthy populations in Brazil. Uh, a little bit about history. Spiritism was founded by the French teacher, teacher and educator Hippolyte Leon Denizard Rivail, also known by his pseudonym Allan Kardec. I think I mess up with something here. Okay, so Rivail always strove to link experimental science with religion, and he defined spiritism as a science, you can see here that he defined it as a science, which deals with the nature, origin, and destiny of spirits, as well as their relationship with the corporeal world. We need to note that since its emergency, Spiritism has been supported by rigorous methodological methods. We can see this throughout the Allan Kardec books. A phrase from the Genesis published by Allan Kardec, uh, just as science, properly speaking, has for object the study of laws of material principles, the special object of Spiritism is the knowledge of the laws of spiritual principles. As this latter class of principles is one of the forces of nature, as it acts incessantly and reciprocally upon the material principles, the result of it is that knowledge of one cannot be complete without knowledge of the other. That separated, they are incomplete, that science without spiritism finds itself utterly powerless to explain certain phenomena by laws of matter alone, 
while spiritism without science would lack support and control. So we can see here the intrinsic connection between science and spiritism for Allan Kardec. So we consider him a, a kind of a scientist of that time. Uh, the complementary spiritist therapy is based on a range of several therapeutic resources, which includes prayer, laying on of hands, or hands-on, fluidotherapy, uh, it's a kind of magnetized water or fluidic water, charity or volunteering, spirit education, and disobsession, which is called spirit release therapy. This is an article that we published in Culture, Medicine, and Psychiatry, 2011, about the Spiritist Hospitals. And there are more than uh, 1,600 Spiritist Centers and numerous Spiritist Hospitals throughout Brazil. Furthermore, practitioners of other religions, such as Catholics, Protestants, Jews, and many, many other religious traditions, make use of the Spiritist Centers for the spiritual treatment that's very common in Brazil in order to cure or relieve their symptoms. So, after this brief uh, introduction, I will show for you the objectives of this paper. So, the aim of the article was to examine the scientific basis for some spiritist therapies in terms of health outcomes. Uh, I should point that this was a systematic review which focused on those studies that provided the most robust methodologies and thus presented the lowest likelihood of bias and confounding. So I will describe the methods. Uh, they are a bit uh, long, but I need to, uh, to describe them for you in order for a better comprehension of our findings. Basically, we identified six hypotheses that underline most of the recommended spiritist therapies, based, of course, on the spiritist literature available. The first hypothesis was that prayer for oneself is associated with better health outcomes. The second one, laying on of hands, uh, was associated with better health outcomes. The third one, magnetized water, is associated with better health outcomes. The fourth one, that volunteerism is associated with better health outcomes. The fifth one, virtuous life and positive effect are associated with better health outcomes. And the sixth one, spirit release therapy is associated with better health outcomes. We decided to look for the evidence based on the PubMed Medline. We know this is a very restrictive database, but we would like to see uh, which kind uh, of studies were included in a very rigorous database. So the search of published studies without any language uh, restrictions, we decide to uh, embrace all languages, uh, were performed using the Medline database from 1966 to March 2010. Uh, in line with a previous article based on a systematic review on spirituality and religiosity, the studies were categorized as inconclusive or subsequently eliminated from further consideration if their designs made it impossible to roll out bias, confounding, or chance as alternative explanations for the results. We also evaluated the quality of the studies in order to only select those that have higher evidence and a sound quality. So we used for that the Newcastle Otau scale to assess the quality of each study. This scale is uh, used for cohort studies. Uh, we adopt the cutoff of more than six. And the clinical trials were rated using the JADAD score. This score is based on a scoring system to assess the methodological quality of clinical trials. Okay, I have some, some problems. 
Here is the data abstraction, which consisted in three phases. The phase one, two, research, uh, two researchers screened the list of references. We excluded the articles not assessing the issue in hand, uh, not assessing the relationship between different types of therapies and health outcomes, and articles not containing the abstracts. Phase two, uh, each study was characterized according to year of publication, country of origin, population evaluated, length of follow-up, number, age, and gender of the participants, health outcome. All articles that are uh, not fulfilling the inclusion criteria and which met the exclusion criteria were omitted to the phase three that was the final analysis. So in phase three, uh, we did another extensive revision of inclusion and exclusion criteria, and we assessed the quality of each study by the JADAD score for clinical trials and the Newcastle Tau scale for the cohort studies. Any disagreement between the reviewers were discussed by a third reviewer and resolved by consensus. Due to the nature of this systematic review, the study in which the studies were uh, dissimilar with respect to population, outcome, and intervention, there are many types of intervention, many types of outcomes, we did not perform a meta-analysis. Instead, what we opted to present those articles supporting each intervention or otherwise, along with the quality of each of these studies. So I will talk about the results that we have found. This is to show the data abstraction of, uh, and the keywords used for each of the hypotheses that we have. Prayer, we decide to use some keywords such as prayer, pray, and religious meditation. Laying on of hands, we decide to use the keywords laying on of hands, imposition of hands, therapeutic touch, heike, and Jore, fluidotherapy, fluidic water, magnetized water, magnetic water, water healing, water heal, energized water, charity, in which we decide to use volunteering, helping others, spirit education, uh, we decide to use moral values, anger proneness, resilience, uh, positive emotions, positive effect, emotional style, goodness, benevolence, humility, virtues, peacefulness, kindness, for this obsession, possession trance, spirit release therapy, spirit possession, spirit healers, spiritist uh, healing, spiritual surgery, spiritists, spirit. And you can see here that uh, articles found, almost 2,000 articles were found for our first uh, analysis. Uh, almost uh, 1,700 were excluded in phase one, remaining 246 for phase two, and were excluded 109 in phase two, remaining 109 for phase three, and then in the final, in the final analysis, 50 articles were selected with a sound methodology that uh, have the inclusion criteria uh, that have been included in our analysis. So I will try to uh, report here any hypoth each hypothesis of this systematic review. The first one is prayer for oneself. So according to our hypothesis, prayer for oneself is associated with better health outcomes. Here is the spiritist view of prayer. Uh, it's from Francisco Cândido Xavier, uh, in the book Nos Domínios da Mediunidade. So, it's through prayer that man obtains the assistance of the good spirits, who come running to sustain him in his good resolutions and inspire wholesome ideas. In this manner, he acquires the moral strength necessary to be able to surmount all difficulties, all challenges, and come back to the straight and narrow path should he at any time stray from it. So this is the basic view from Spiritism about prayer. 
Some of you, of you uh, may asking why uh, we not included the intercessory prayer. So we decided not to include some studies on intercessory prayer, given its major and sometimes for some authors intractable methodological flaw. Namely, the receipt of prayer cannot be controlled and therefore it's impossible to ascertain to what degree individuals in the control groups were actually the recipients of the intervention from loved ones, family members, clergy or others, besides the research intercessors. Since there is a strong disagreement between scientists uh, in the context of intercessory prayer, we decide to just exclude from our analysis. So here are some of the studies that we have found. For uh, all the studies, I, I would suggest you to see at evidence-based complementary alternative medicine journal because it's open access. So all these studies are listed there. And I will cite some of these studies. The first one evaluated almost 200 patients undergoing coronary artery bypass graft. They make a follow-up of three weeks, and they found that prayer frequencies were associated with reduced complications, but not hospitalization. The second study, 300 patients following open heart surgery. They were follow-uped by uh, four to five weeks. And prayer coping was inversely related to postoperative stress symptoms. Another one, they evaluated 150 other patients following CABG. They follow for one year, and they found that most patients praying about their postoperative problems and that private prayer appears to be signific significantly decreased the depression and general distress one year post. CABG. So as a conclusion for the first hypothesis, we found that prayer for oneself appears to be linked to better health outcomes, such as lower rate of complications after CABG, improved optimism, reduced distress. However, we must mention that the lack of rigorous methodological studies and the highly selected populations preclude confirmation at this hypothesis at this moment. The second hypothesis was laying on of hands, which we call PASI. Uh, so laying on of hands is associated with better health outcomes. This is the hypothesis. The spiritist view, uh, it's in the Genesis from Allan Kardec, in which uh, he reports, the spiritual fluids which constitute one of the states of the universal cosmic fluid are then the atmosphere of spiritual beings. It's the element whence they draw the materials with which they operate, the place where special phenomena take place, perceptible to the sight and hearing of the spirit, but which escapes the carnal senses which are impressed alone by tangible matter. Again, for laying on of hands, passe, uh, we decide to include only comparative studies evaluating the therapeutic touch or uh, any other uh, healing imposition, uh, hands-on uh, studies uh, versus sham or placebo therapeutic touch or laying on of hands. The groups not submitted to therapeutic touch or laying on of hands or submitted to mimic or sham therapeutic touch and laying on of hands were excluded due to the placebo effect of impositions of hand. In other words, if the control doesn't have laying on of hands, we will exclude these studies. So we found, found some studies here. I will again cite some of these studies. First one, they evaluate uh, 65 nursing home residents. The follow-up was three days. They compare therapeutic touch versus placebo therapeutic touch, and they evaluate the behavioral symptoms and the cortisol. They found that restlessness was significantly reduced the experimental group compared to the control group. 
there was a significant difference in morning cortisol variability among groups across time periods. Another study evaluated 90 cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. Again, they compared therapeutic touch versus placebo therapeutic touch. They evaluated as outcomes pain and fatigue. And as a conclusion, the therapeutic touch was more effective in decreasing pain and fatigue of the cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy than the usual care group. While the placebo group indicated a decreasing trend in pain and fatigue scores compared with the usual care group. Another study evaluated 51 residents of a long-term care facility. They were followed up by five days, again comparing therapeutic touch versus placebo therapeutic touch as an outcome disruptive, disruptive behavior. They found that physical non-aggressive behaviors decreased significantly in those patients with, who received therapeutic touch compared with those with usual care. No significant difference to uh, physically aggressive and verbally agitated behaviors were observed, observed across three study groups. Another study uh, evaluated 55 nursing home residents for six days. The therapeutic touch was more effective in decreasing the behavioral symptoms of dementia than the usual care while the placebo group indicated a decreasing trend to behavioral symptoms of dementia compared with usual care. There are some other studies. I will just cite one. Uh, 99 burn patients followed by six days. They found that subjects re who received therapeutic touch reported significantly greater reduction in pain and greater reduction in anxiety on the visual analog scale for anxiety uh, than did who received the sham or the placebo therapeutic touch. So after compiling this data, we reach a conclusion that the body of evidence accumulated to date points to a positive effect of therapeutic touch on behavioral symptoms and in most pain studies while present some contradictory results regarding anxiety. Some experimental studies have also shown promising results on cells, such as human cultures, osteoblasts, red blood cells, which further give support to this hypothesis. Fluidotherapy, uh, magnetized water, fluidic water, the hypothesis number three, that the magnetized water is associated with better health outcomes. So the spiritist view is in the Genesis from Allan Kardec again. Uh, as to the means employed to cure him, it's evident that the clay formed of soil and saliva obtained its healing properties from the healing fluid with which it was impregnated. Thus, the most simple agents such as water, for example, can acquire powerful and effective qualities under the action of the spiritual or magnetic fluid, for which they serve as a, a vehicle or reservoir. So this is the spirit's view of fluidic water. Uh, curiously, only two studies remained after applying this rigorous exclusion criteria. Both were from the odontology field. That's interesting because in 98, Johnson evaluated the effect of magnetized water or our irrigator on plaque, calculus, and gingival health. The results showed that the group using the magnetized water resulted in 64% less calculus in comparison to the control group, where this reduction reached statistical significance, corroborating the studies found by Watt in 2005. In fact, we were very disappointed with the studies found in PubMed regarding magnetized water. However, of course, PubMed is not everything. And just to show you, I brought here a study by uh, Savieto, that's from University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, that make an experimental study in which 
she evaluated the effects of the consumption of water treated with therapeutic touch on the healing of uniform wounds in the skin of mice. She found that the average wound size in the experimental group was found to be consistently smaller than that in the control group. And the difference among the measures obtained in the two groups reached the statistical significance. This study was published in 2007. And in conclusion, uh, there is a lack of well-conducted, controlled, double-blind studies regarding magnetized or fluidic water. We found also some observational data from the 80s pointing to potential benefit effects in humans and studies in rats have shown promising results. There are some studies from the Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union, but they are not controlled and, and they are present in PubMed also. However, the currently available evidence neither supports or rejects this hypothesis. Clearly, further studies are warranted on this issue. The other hypothesis, the charity or volunteerism. So, volunteerism is associated with better health outcomes. In the Spiritist view, Allan Kardec, in the Gospel according to the Spiritism, wrote, without charity, there is no salvation. So he points out the importance of volunteering, charity, in the context of the Spiritism. We are very surprised because a lot of studies were found regarding this matter. Uh, I will just uh, briefly uh, summarize some of these studies because they are, they are very extensive. First one, they evaluated uh, 2,600 non-institutionalized adult population for 20 years. Uh, they found that midlife environmental volunteering was significantly associated with physical activity, self-reported health, and less depressive symptoms in the follow-up. Another study uh, evaluated 5,000 Israelis aged 60 years or older. They were followed for seven years, and they found that those who, who volunteered for 10 to 14 years had a reduced mortality compared to the, those who not volunteer. In addition, those who volunteered privately, not as part of an official organization, also had this reduced mortality, uh, avoiding some kind of social uh, support, so, social bias in this study. Another study with 7,500 American community dwelling uh, older people, followed by 96 months, they found that frequent volunteers had significantly reduced mortality compared to non-volunteers. Another study which evaluated uh, 3,600 adults, they were followed for 80 years. They found that older adults who volunteer and who engage to more hours of volunteering report higher levels of well-being including less depression, less functional disability, and better health. Another one with more than 2,000 non-institutionalized persons aged 25 years old or more, followed by eight years, found that volunteering was a protective, has a protective effect on mortality among those who volunteered for one organization or for 40 hours or less over the past year. So, in conclusion, uh, the evidence supporting a relationship between vol volunteerism and health outcomes is moderate to strong, particularly concerning survival, well-being, health status, and depression in the elderly. The mechanisms underlying this relationship warrant further investigation. Another hypothesis, our fifth hypothesis, that virtuous life and positive effect. 
Uh, in Spiritism, there is the spiritual education that I will mention later. So, virtuous life and positive effect is associated with better health outcomes. According to the Gospel, uh, according to Spiritism, the Spiritist view uh, puts that the main purpose of a spirit to return to a body of a child is to be educated again. Hence, the importance of the spiritist education because to spiritually educate the children is to prepare them to face all times and all adversities of life according to the postulates of gospel. In fact, Jesus' lessons include the cultivation of love, humility, purity, peace, goodness, mercy, benevolence, compassion, good feelings, among many others. Again, interestingly, we found several studies regarding all the called spiritual education. So, uh, the first study, almost 13,000 middle-aged adults, they found a positive association between anger proneness and incident peripheral artery disease. Another study with almost 13,000 adults, followed by 53 months, they found that hydrate anger compared uh, with their low anger counterparts were at increased risk of coronary heart disease. Another study with almost 2,000 adults, followed by 10 years, they found that uh, increased positive effect was protective against 10-year incident coronary heart disease. Just another one, uh, almost more than uh, 1,500 non-frail older patients, they were followed by seven years. They found that positive effect is protective against the functional and physical decline associated with frailty. Another one with 1,000 Israeli Jews aged uh, 75 to 94 years old. They followed by almost three years. And they found that re resilience predicted less mortality in these patients. Another one with 100 participants followed by 10 days. Uh, I, I show this uh, study because it, uh, it evaluated kind acts. That's a very interesting uh, type of study, and the outcome was satisfaction with life. So they found that kind acts performed daily over as little as 10 days increased life satisfaction between these patients. So in conclusion for this hypothesis number four, there is strong support for the hypothesis that positive effect is associated with better health outcomes especially survival, as well as lower risk of physical health disability and fewer cardiovascular events. Several experimental studies also corroborate with these findings. Our final hypothesis uh, concerning this obsession, the spirit release therapy. Hypothesis six, spirit release therapy is associated with better health outcomes. According to the Gospel, according to Spiritism from Allan Kardec, obsession is the persistent action uh, which an inferior or bad spirit exercises over an individual. It may present many varied char characteristics, from a simple moral influence with no perceptible exterior signs to a complete organic and mental perturbation. It may obstruct all mediumship faculties. So that's the view of spiritism. Scientific evidence. Despite the number of articles of spirit possession, few studies have evaluated this obsession and its relationship with the health outcomes. Consequently, no studies were selected for our final analysis. Nevertheless, a study that which was not indexed in the Medline database, and therefore we did not include in our final analysis, uh, this study was conducted in Brazil by Frederico Leon. 
the authors evaluated 14, 40 patients with mental disabilities. 20 were submitted to this obsession sessions and 20 were controls with the usual care in both. Both received the usual care. They use a scale that was the interactive observation scale for psychiatric inpatients. So they use this scale to evaluate the outcomes. The comparison of the control group with the experimental group verified a difference in variation between the groups, which reads a, a significant a P equals 0 0.045, which, according to the authors, demonstrated the possible benefits of this kind of intervention. It was published in 2007 in Revista de Psiquiatria Clínica. This uh, journal is already uh, ISI and web, web of Science. Another study published by a friend of mine, Moreira Almeida, evaluated uh, 115 mediums selected from different Cardassist Spiritist Center in Sao Paulo, Brazil. O authors found that mediums included in this study had a high socioeducational level, a low prevalence of mental disorders, and were socially well adjusted. Uh, according to the authors, the mediumistic process was characterized by dissociative and psychotic experiences, but these experiences were not related to mental disorders. In conclusion of this hypothesis number six, uh, there is a lack of well-conducted, controlled, double-blind studies concerning the disobsession or spirit release therapy which precludes support or rejection of this hypothesis at the present time. Again, further studies are needed on this field. So, a uh, brief discussion of our findings. This review indicates a totally new field of research that uh, was not yet fully explored by the medical science. We can view uh, this happening, especially because in PubMed, there are few studies that uh, have carried out this, uh, these results. It shows that science is indirectly demonstrating that some of these therapies are related with better health outcomes, while other treatments have been just overlooked or poorly assessed. Fresh studies in this field could help the discipline of complementary and alternative medicine to investigate this relationship between mind, body, and soul or spirit. Okay, I'm running out of time, but uh, I will end soon. Although these therapies have been little studied and are poorly understood by modern day science, there are some initiatives in Brazil, such as the NUPS, that's Núcleo de Pesquisas em Espiritualidade e Saúde, by Federal University of Juiz de Fora, the AMIS, that's São Paulo, Brazilian and International Medical Spiritist Associations, the PROCER, that's from University of São Paulo, João Evangelista Hospital, in São Paulo, Brazil, that are trying to encourage the further scientific research into spiritual healing protocols and to promote international congress such as this one. Moreira Almeida and Lotu Funeto in this article published in Transcultural Psychiatry 2005 wrote, the importance of spiritist views in Brazil indicates the need for more academic research of this tradition. The present authors and I particularly share this view with them. I believe that now is the time to undertake a thorough, a thorough investigation on spiritual treatments, regardless of religious affiliation or scientific dogmas. As a conclusion, in summary, science is indirectly demonstrating that some of these therapies can be associated to better health outcomes, and that other therapies have been just overlooked or poorly investigated. Further studies in this field could contribute to the disciplines of complementary and alternative medicine by investigating the relationship between body, mind, and soul, spirit. 
I would like to end uh, with a, a citation from Allan Kardec that I think uh, summarizes all the, the lecture that I, I gave for you. That is, unshakable faith is only that which can meet reason face to face in ev every human epoch. So thank you. This is my email. If uh, you have further questions or would like to uh, make some partnerships, we have already in Sao Paulo Medical Spiritist Association uh, partnerships with the Duke University from Harold Koenig and George Washington with Christina Puchowski. Thank you very much. Thank you.